Good afternoon. My name is Jasmine Dehalik, and these are my colleagues, Drew Dalton and Victoria Hosha. We are a team of external ethics consultants here to discuss the financial, legal, and ethical crisis that your company, the Pirate Bay, is experiencing as a result of copyright infringement. As we understand it, your company operates the PirateBay.org, which is a torrent site that allows people to distribute files and content over a slow speed internet connection using BitTorrent Protocol, a network efficient method of high speed downloading. Your company will go online to this website, search for any media file, film, music that they want, even software, and they will be able to find it and download it for free. Registered users will upload media files, then media files will generate and attract users and customers, and your company makes money through advertisements, as we understand it. Your company, on the technological side, utilizes peer-to-peer -peer file sharing and BitTorrent protocol. Peer-to-peer -peer file sharing is essentially when one user is able to connect directly to another and upload information in that method. It uses BitTorrent protocol in which Instead of uploading directly your one file to the internet and then directly to another user, you'll upload bits and pieces into the cloud, onto the internet, onto your website, and then bits and pieces will be filtered to not one, but many users, thus enabling high-speed downloading at low bandwidth connection. This gives your company a value proposition. Your company, thepiratebay.org, provides easy access to information that's fast and reliable for users. It also efficiently utilizes network connection. But because of this easy access and this great downloading speed, it also results in abuse. Through P2P file sharing of copyrighted materials, your company has enabled, but not participated directly, in the distribution of materials uh, that have been copyrighted by various artists and software developers. This is a real issue. It denies producers the right to profit. It removes incentive for these producers to create because they cannot make profit, which will limit innovation and be a negative effect on society in the whole. The copyright infringement has resulted in certain legal issues as well. Your company has been sued by the Motion Picture Association of America, by a Dutch anti-piracy group called Brine, and in Sweden, there are, stock, there are cases, court cases in Stockholm that resulted in $14 million in fines for damages that your company has caused because it has enabled users to spread information and media illegally. Your company is not directly culpable as has been discovered in these court cases. Your company has assisted in copyright infringement, which, according to the legal cases, is, is punishable by at least one year in jail. The presidents of your company have already been sent to jail for a year. In an appeal, they negotiated for low, less jail time but higher fines of currently a total of $7 million that your company has not paid yet. This has also resulted in police raids of 2006 and 2009, where your company, your website, was taken down. All of the servers were taken down by the police, and profits were shut down entirely. For a moment, temporarily, your and then your company was able to go back online again. But this could potentially happen in the future. The financial risk of pirating I've discussed. Your company currently makes money through advertisements. You make $8 million and pay nearly $112,000 in maintenance. But, if the continuation of your, but the continuation of your current methods will lead to fines, it will lead to government shutdown, which will ultimately, ultimately lead to a total loss of profit. Now what is open source? Open source is an idea. Open source is something very similar to what your company does. It's free access to material. Typically, open source has been used to describe software development. A programmer will upload the source code of his program onto the internet, allow other users to develop it for free. He will not be compensated, he will not profit. And then they will put the new source code back online, and it will make 
a real benefit to society because the program has been bettered, it has been improved by everyone. Everyone is able to participate in this. And your company does that to a certain extent. Unfortunately, that extent is the free sharing of media, which is bad in your company. It really negatively will affect society. However, your company does do something right. Your use of peer-to-peer -peer file sharing increases the number of sources. It makes information gathering very, very accessible to everybody. Your use of BitTorrent protocol enables high-speed downloading at low bandwidth, reducing the digital divide in countries that are unable to connect, in countries that have DSL or lower um, internet connections. You're enabling people all over the world access to information, easy access. But we want to direct your company in a way that will make this easy access ethical, legal, and financially stable. Currently, your motto is the world's most resilient BitTorrent tracker. Now this resilience is not a matter of pride in that your company has withstood government takedowns. It is a matter of resilience of technology. If one torrent goes down, another one will come back up instantly. This is good for society, and we'd like to continue this in our proposal of your company. Now I would like to hand it off to my colleague Drew, who will discuss the proposal. Thank you, Jack. Thank you, Jasmine. At this point, we have to introduce the topic of open source. We have discussed peer-to-peer -peer file sharing and its positive and negative elements of its usage within the Pirate Bay. Clearly, there is an ethical dilemma, and we have devised a proposal that will structure your company for the better. Our proposal is to restructure the PirateBay.org. Here are the key policy points and the ethical ideals we would like to implement within the company. First, as an overall policy, we would like to remove any material that is copyrighted or that is illegally co or that is copyrighted and put on illegally. Um, this will influence the new structure of your website in which we will attempt to promote innovation through media and software development, to provide a venue for independent media and software developers, and to continue availability of resources. Finally, as an underlying technological foundation for your company, we would like to continue BitTorrent protocol and peer-to-peer -peer file sharing, which we believe will be a great benefit to society as a whole. As we have addressed earlier, it is ethically wrong to assist in, <coughs> in copyright infringement. In order to solve this problem, we have created a new terms of agreement that each user will have to comply with for your website. This ensures that your company is no longer liable for any copyright infringement that could occur. If the product creator notifies you and provided substantial proof that their intellectual property rights are being infringed upon, then your company will have to comply to the law and remove the suspect files. This means that your company will also have to hire a team of employees and divert resources to manage these complaints and removals. In terms of restructuring the company, we have acknowledged that your company may lose a base of its consumers because it is no longer allowing the distribution of copyrighted materials. We have come up with a solution to this problem. While still attracting consumers to the um, free um, free portion and public portion of your website, we also suggest to offer a portion of your website that will be specifically for premium users. Public users will have limited access to media, they will have access to open source software, they will have access to a form for software development, while premium users will have access to online streaming of copyrighted materials and troubleshooting services. We have divided up the public portion of our website into four different categories. 20% will be dedicated to music slash media, 20% to film, and 20% to user-friendly software. And lastly, 40% to software development. In the media and film music portion of our website, 
users will be able to voluntarily upload their product onto your website. This encourages innovation <coughs> by the free advertising these artists will have on your website. They will also be encouraged to develop upon other people's works in the forms of music remixes and film editing. The rights of these authors will be protected by the terms of agreement we established earlier. Currently, the Pirate Bay operates, um, or I mean, provides easy access to critical applications such as Microsoft Office and Adobe Creative Suite for free. As we've discussed, there are legal and ethical implications to making a distribution of these products available. In the revised edition of our website, we would like to provide open source software alternatives to these expensive big name software programs. Pro or public users will have free access to applications such as OpenOffice, which is a word pro processing application, and GIMP, a graphics editing application. The appeal to these alternative programs is that they are free and legal. The creators and copyright holders of these programs have already, already voluntarily posted these creations onto the internet. And this um, is sort of, a, a, what we are doing with this portion of the website is creating a sort of database of open source software in which, a, or in a centralized location for users to download the applications necessary to flourish in education, business, or everyday life. We have just introduced the idea of centralized location for customers to discover software. We also have designed a portion of your website to act as a centralized location for software developers. As a lo location for software development, we would like to provide access to, to hosting and tools necessary for developers to build and improve upon existing software. One of these tools includes chat forums for people to discuss their software. The idea behind the development portion of the website is that the developers will be encouraged to create new software that we will then release to the public through the commercial software portion of your website. In other words, the users themselves are attracting more users and bringing us more profit. Finally, I would like to discuss the distribution method of your website. We should continue the use of BitTorrent protocol and downloading through peer-to-peer -peer file sharing in every aspect of your company. Continuing the uses of these downloading methods will increase the value proposition of your website by giving users a greater availability of resources. It also allows people with low bandwidth connections to upload and download files legally and ethically if properly utilized as it will be in our website. People like fast downloads. That is a good thing for your website and that is one thing that we want to continue. Now the challenge is to direct fast downloads to shared files that are 100% dedicated to benefiting society. Now this is the extent of our proposal. Now I will be handing off the presentation to my colleague Victoria Rocha who will be discussing the ethical, legal, and financial implications of our proposal. Thank you, Drew. Um, the first thing that's always on the mind is money, the bottom line. Will our proposal be financially profitable for your company? Well, I'd be lying to you if I said that at first your bottom line would not be affected. But you will see that eventually you will overcome these losses and in the long run your company will be able to profit and flourish. Currently, your company makes all of its profits by using advertisements on your website. For every registered user, your company profits at $1.60 per user per year. Since your website currently brings in 5 million registered users, we've calculated your current total revenue to be $8 million. In our proposed website, we would like to continue generating revenue by using advertisements, but our concern is whether or not we'd be able to bring the amount of users we need to be extremely profitable. So we projected the number of users from different websites that emulate the services we would like to provide in our public sector of the site. Vimeo is a media site similar to YouTube. GrooveShark is a music site. And OpenOffice, which we've mentioned before, 
is one of the key open source software applications that we would like to provide on our new site. Finally, SourceForge is a centralized location for open source software development. For every user per year, we can make $1.60 through Google AdSense, which is essentially a website advertising site. We estimated that our total users would be approximately 4, million, 4 million users, which would, in the end, bring us $6.56 million in revenue. We would also make profits from our premium user plan. At a rate of $7 a month per user, we could make $84 per user per year. We estimated this by using the rate that Netflix uses on their site. We also estimated the potential number of premium users over the years and the revenue that the number of these users can bring. Now we also took into account the total costs that we would need for our new site. We projected that there would be a startup cost and restructuring cost because of our website design, server usage, sales literature, and research. And we estimated this to be about $200,000. There will also be financial costs to upholding these copyright laws that we are so concerned about. Here we are referring to the team of engineers who will constantly be addressing the copyright issues and removing suspect content from the website, which this would approximately amount to a million dollars. So overall, we calculated our startup cost, website, and legal maintenance to be $1.2 million. There will also be cost to implementing our premium user program because we will need to contract with film and music studios. According to the New York Times, Netflix pays $25 million a year in royalties and licensing fees. In the beginning, your company will only provide about a quarter of the movie base that Netflix provides. Therefore, we estimated about a quarter of this cost to our royalties and licensing fees, which is $6.25 million. Now, do remember that your company has currently faced a fine of $7 million in damages, and these have not been paid. However, even without including these damages, we can still show you that our proposed method will be more profitable than your current method. According to the records of the 2009 Stockholm trial, the defendants, your company, estimated yearly expenses of $112,000. In our proposed method, we discussed the total revenue coming from advertisements and our premium user rates, as opposed to only the advertisements that your company is currently gaining. Our total cost would consist of new website and legal maintenance programs and of licensing fees. As you can see, this new program will cost more and not show as much profitability at first, but in the long run, we will profit and flourish as a company. As your company grows and increases in popularity, it'll, it will accumulate more premium users and profitability will rise. As shown in the graph, the red line represents your current profit, not including damages and legal fines, which is approximately $8 million. The blue line, however, estimates the profit gain for advertisements and our premium user program that we would like to implement on our new website. We have indicated that as your company gains more premium users, your profits will increase. With only 150,000 premium users, the profits of the website will break even with your profits that you are currently making at $8 million. In time, and as premium users increase, the, your profits could rise to $25 million with premium user base of only 500,000 users. This is only 2.5% of the amount of users that Netflix currently generates. Overall, in the beginning, your company will make a loss, but in time, with our proposed restructuring, your company will be even more profitable than it is right now. In terms of legal considerations, earlier Jasmine addressed the problem of copyright laws and legal issues that your company faces. By not allowing copyrighted materials to involuntarily be posted on your site, we will be avoiding the liability for assistance in copyright infringement with our new proposal. Additionally, the terms of agreement that Drew discussed will help your company further avoid this liability. Now, even though our proposal was greatly influenced by the financial and legal aspects, we greatly considered the ethical implications as well. In order to fully analyze the ethical implications of our proposal, we first had to identify our main stakeholders, the company, the consumers and the users, and also the copyright holders. Oops. We then analyzed the pros and cons 
of each of the stakeholders, the holders with our new proposal, the rights of those stakeholders, the relationships within the stakeholders, and are also the organizational policy of your company. For the business, we will now be avoiding copyright infringement, which will in turn make it a more ethically and legal, legally sound site. Also, over time, we can increase in profits, and this will make our company more profitable than it is right now. However, the cons of our recommendation would be that we would lose initially part of our consumer base. We would have initial financial instability, and it costs time and money to implement a whole new program along with maintenance. For the copyright holders, there would no longer be any more infringement on their intellectual property rights, which is one of the main concerns. There also would be free advertising on our site. They would not lose profit because they would be compensated for their work. And also they would have an incentive to create and to, pro and to show progress in society. However, there are potential risks of other torrent tracker sites arising elsewhere if our company is changed. And there's also a problem of fraud on our site, which would be um, taken a part of in our terms of agreement. For the consumers and the users of our site, they would no longer be participating in copyright infringement. They would have full access to media on our site and an online community to share information and innovate. However, this access to media would no longer be unlimited, free access. We would have our premium users, which would have to pay a, a fee to gain all this access, but we feel that this would, in the end, be more successful for your company. Now, my colleagues and I have assessed whether or not each stakeholder's right was fulfilled in your company's current method and in our proposed method. Currently, your company is making use of its right to gain profit. But even though this profit is good, it comes at the cost of other people's products. Currently, the consumer has unlimited access to information, media, and software through your website. But to the extent of which the consumer's rights is fulfilled, the copyright holders rights are infringed upon. Because of your website, the copyright holders, artists, and software developers are denied their intellectual property rights to profit and to gain recognition for their work. However, in our proposed method, we feel that all of the stakeholders' rights are fulfilled. We believe that as a business, you will be able to profit while providing the consumer with adequate information, access to information and media, and while avoiding infringement on copyright holders' rights. Also, we discussed the relationship of the stakeholders. We felt that with our proposal, each stakeholder would benefit in the relationship with the other. As the company, you would be trusted as a safe place for sharing information. Copyright holders would be able to rely on your company as a means of sharing their own intellectual property while still sharing their information safely. Users will feel comfortable with the site and would be able to access legally, media, and software, and be able to innovate. Now I'll turn it over to Jasmine, who will address the organizational policy of your uh, company and conclude our presentation. We have discussed what your company currently does, and it allows information to be shared, but at the negative effect at the cost of the copyright holders. Your current motto is the world's most resilient BitTorrent tracker. On certain website chat forums, it has been rumored that this was sort of an attempt to say that your company was so good that it could not be taken down by any government policy. Well, it is. Your company's technology is very advanced. You have maintained all of your servers through years of government shutdowns. But I believe that this is not the only thing that your company is doing. In fact, I do not believe that it is what your company is doing at all. I believe that your company is discussing here the resilience of the technology that you have and the resilience of the community that you have created. A community of millions strong, five million strong, of users who are interconnected and spreading information. I think your company is exemplified by doing this. The founder of the free software movement, Richard Stallman, said this. 
sharing useful knowledge, the spirit of goodwill, the spirit of helping your neighbor voluntarily is society's most important resource and makes the difference between a livable society and a dog-eat-dog -dog jungle. I know that this is what your company is doing, is trying to do, sharing knowledge. Now we have proposed a new policy of your company, a new policy of the piratebay.org, the world's most ethically resilient shared resource for information, innovation, and progress. With our proposal, we want to enable your company con to continue doing this, to continue sharing, but not at the cost of any of your stakeholders. Now, we have discussed your corporate operations. Your use of BitTorrent protocol and peer-to-peer -peer file sharing makes everything so accessible. It makes information easy. It makes it there to anybody on this planet. Anybody, poor, rich, low bandwidth, high-speed connection. But this has resulted in some abuse. It has resulted in the distribution of copyrighted materials, and we believe that this is not presenting a good image for your company. And we can actually improve profits by going completely to an open, open source metho methodology where everything on, your everything on your website is uploaded voluntarily of the, with all of the rights of the copyright holders being protected. And we believe that the implications for this company will be financially beneficial, legally you will no longer be viable, and on an ethical level, everything will be maintained. Now we believe that your company, it is up to you to change your name, to continue keeping the piratebay.org, or to change your logo. That is up to you. We believe that the piratebay.org will not be about stealing. It will be about where curious minds can come and discover hidden treasures of information. Now thank you for your time. We're accepting questions now. I'd like to raise a question about the, uh, the ethical dimension of the, the recommendation because uh, the other members of the board are uh, honorable and reputable people, but I have a reputation for basically being refrained. And so the um, concern I have is that, uh, well, everybody knows that they wanted to vote me off the board. I can't <laughs> block that. But uh, my concern is that the whole open source movement uh, of course, is as expression of freedom, individual rights, uh, recognition, or at least the belief that the current copyright laws are, uh, are fundamentally unethical in themselves. I recognize that the recommendation that you have, which lines up on the side of a very aggressive copyright protection, does give us legal protections that we didn't have, that it does minimize the financial exposure that we had before. Uh, what I'm concerned about, though, is that it seems to me that this now aligns us with groups like the RIAA, who basically bullied uh, you know, kids and uh, anyone who was vulnerable in the whole you know, downloading music issue, and that we've then given up the commitment to freedom and individual rights. And so I'm wondering whether we're now to get legal protection and financial protection, we're engaging in a severe ethical compromise. I was wondering if you could address that concern. Sorry, I'm checking mics. Can you hear us? We can hear you. Okay. Yeah. okay. Um, you sort of, I think your question was about the entire idea of it. What was your question exactly? The question is that the proposal that you give, while well, you say that mm -hmm. it, it satisfies all rights and is, ethic, gives us eth is ethically defensible and ethical as well, I'm saying there seems to me to be a piece of it which is ethically indefensible because it violates fundamental rights of freedom and individuality, which was the core of the open source movement. And so I was wondering if you could address that. Well, we did um, think about this and when coming up with our proposal. Um, the issue we have with 
freedom, complete and absolute freedom to uh, media. Um, well, we believe that one, freedom to information is everybody's most basic right. Everybody should be able to access information. And media is a form of information. So they should be able to access this as well, correct? Unfortunately, sometimes um, the good of one individual is the negative or the bad of another individual. So in completely enforcing that right, we will be diminishing the creator's rights to um, the right to profit, essentially. The right to, uh, their right to be free to choose to make money off of this. So we believe that in order to be fair to both the consumer and to the producer, um, we have to remove copyright infringement from your company. Also, we discussed if we were to um, uphold the copyright holders' rights, that they would be able to innovate and have more of an incentive to innovate, because if there was no compensation for anyone's work, then we feel that as a society as a whole, that progress would almost be halted, because I mean, who's going to really go out of their way to create something new if they're not going to get anything out of it? Um, so that was also something we discussed at the forum. I think to follow up on, on the earlier question, uh, in looking at the financial side of it, uh, I agree. I think that, that what you're proposing is, is that we're actually completely changing our user audience. That we're currently serving an audience of rebels who wants free access at any cost, and if we have to plunder a few artists' work, that's just part of the cost of doing business. Pirating is a messy game, you know. So, and, and fines and jail and things like that are just part of the cause. And so, what I'm concerned about, especially in looking at the finances of this conversion, is we're talking about we need to attract an entirely new audience. We need to take market share from already existing providers like Netflix at the same cost that they're charging with 25% of the content they have. I'm just concerned that it's going to take millions and millions and millions of dollars for us to convince anywhere near the number of, of pirates that are currently on our system to be paying customers in the real world. Um, so your concern is that we will be losing our consumer base entirely. Uh, I, I, my concern is, is that we are completely marketing, we're abandoning one audience completely and happen to go and acquire a brand new audience who's already served by a product at a cost that's no greater than the cost we're proposing. Uh, I, I, don't, I don't see the incentive, and, and, and I think that our audience will continue to be served. I think that, that one of the comments that you made in the cons is that you know, if we don't do it, somebody's going to do it. And we are, we're already established players, and I would just argue that fines and, fines and that kind of exposure is just a cost of doing business. Um, well, if you continue in this manner, um, and you understand that there are fines and that there are damages possible, well, your company only makes $8 million a year. Now. Now. <laughs> but that's from advertisements. We are suggesting that we have even though it may be a completely different consumer base, it will not be one that is less profitable. Because there are two halves of this company. There is the company that is open to open source, to media that's uploaded voluntarily, and we believe that we can generate a strong amount of that consumer base because we're providing not just media and music for free, but we're also providing software, really good software, that could be developed on. We're providing not only a place for people to just upload things and take things from other people, but a place for development, even in the media aspect. So we want, to, we want our website to encourage people to innovate, to encourage people to create things and not just to share, to share and to create, which we believe will be profitable in the end. I have kind of a follow-on question on the business model that we have and some of the current developments which actually would play well to parts of our past. And that would be um, moving more toward the open source aspect of 
Android and all the app development things where we're kind of merging between tablets and smartphones and computers. And did you actually um, consider in some of your strategic alternatives where maybe playing to some of this bad boy reputation that we have, the riffraff in the past, um, to maybe attract some of the software development, as well as you mentioned artists who are trying to get their work out there and for free to get content. So that rather than going head to head with Netflix, um, there might be something more in the Wikipedia model. And some of the things you were saying reminded me of where people for the noble cause will put content out there and not expect a lot of remuneration. What would our business model be though? Where would the revenues come from? You get advertising revenues and margins, or did you go down that path with the whole free but honorable business model? Um, that is our path entirely. There are <coughs> like two portions. Our idea in the public portion is to attract the riffraff, as you so say, mm -hmm. the independent developers who aren't copyright protected but aren't necessarily concerned about being copyright protected. That's our goal with the public sector. We'll make money through ads in the margins. But we want people to come to our site and to create and to share and develop. That's what the chat forums are. So people can share their information and continue to develop. But in terms of that portion, we're not competing with Netflix. It is the premium portion of our website that is sort of competing with Netflix. That's true. We will not have the resources to completely you know, give you everything that Netflix can give you. But we're not, we're giving you something more and something in different directions. We're giving you a one-stop shop. We're not just giving you movies and films and online streaming. We're giving you some movies, but we're also giving you music. And we're giving you troubleshooting services. But we would like our company on both the premium and the private sector to act as a resource aggregator. So it won't just be um, the movies on the premium side that have been uploaded by uh, the the studios that we've entered into contracts to. If I wanted to find an obscure movie from some, um, from another country, a foreign film, and that's not provided by Netflix, well, what if one user uploads it to either the premium or public sector, and it's been so long and it's such an old movie that it's already in the public domain? Well, our company can be a venue for that. We could be a venue for something that Netflix can't even provide something that I believe the riffraff would be very attracted to. I have a question in this, in the digital age. Why, why not we just move the servers and move our corporate office to a place in which we do not have to worry about you know, the copyright issues? Because the copyright issues, well, it's, you know, has merit, but there are problems with even the copyright law because, you know, each country has its own interpretation of copyright. And if we have a base of consumers out there that do want this information, that should be free. Um, and we are providing that for them. Why do we want to go into, and I can't speak for my colleagues on the board, but why would we or I want to move into a realm where Napster has already gone down to the point where they have to ship to this hand and hand. Mm -hmm. Apple, uh, what is it? Uh, Apple products, the uh, Apple Music. And also, we also have Bear Share and Bear Share Life. While well, Bear Share is still running and they still are able to pull down information, mm -hmm. they still have the Bear Share Life operating. So they're still able to share products on an open uh, platform. And in addition to the question of moving our servers, because we are in, we are able to move quickly and also probably much more efficiently in the cost instead of going down the path that you're recommending. If we have our users sign a copyright agreement in order that I, they will infringe on that, we're basically telling them that we are no longer, we're basically washing our hands of any responsibility, so it's their responsibility. But what are we doing to that product? Are we encoding the music? Are we encoding the software? What are we doing to protect the, the artist, the creator? Or are we just going to be, as you said, the aggregator 
for a product that we give and say we're not taking any responsibility, taking any responsibility, but whatever happens to it, that's off our hands. That's none of our concern. Those two questions. That was those two questions. Yeah. Um, I can start and then Jasmine can follow. <clears throat> well, originally your server has been moved several times. Um, it's based out of Sweden, but it has been moved to other outside countries, especially with the raids, um, which was a really big problem for your company. So as far as moving servers go, um, your company can move its servers, and I feel that that's a you know, valid proposition, but that these raids have still continued, you've still been fined, um, and overall our proposition is not such as just running away from the problem, but rather finding a, a new way to implement something that can resolve the problem and in effect be more positive for um, society as a whole as a company. Um, and the second question is what was your second question? Could you repeat it? It was pushing off the copyright issue or the responsibility oh, to so. the user. So your two questions, whether or not we could use our technologically advanced um, system of switching servers, and the second question was terms of agreement. In terms of the servers, your company is not having a problem with that. Your company is so technologically advanced that it has been able to do this for years. Uh, in the 2006 raid, they took down 26 of your servers, but it went back up within a matter of days. Now your company currently is based in Sweden, but it has a .org, and your servers, your main server is in Switzerland. So in terms of copyright law, um, Sweden has the easiest copyright copyright law that's sort of around. Unfortunately for your company, um, groups from America and the small uh, Dutch anti-piracy group called Brine have, are still coming after your company. So no matter where you move, they will still be coming for you, which will result, even though your companies do not technically have anything on their server, like Napster did, that's where Napster was liable. They were actually holding files on their server and that's how the government took them down. Your company is still assisting in copyright infringement, which currently um, the law finds to be very illegal and will result in damages for your company. But on, a on the level of terms of agreement, technically your company does have a terms of agreement. We've gone online, we've checked. Um, when a user tries to upload something, they pretty much sign their rights away, or not sign their rights away, but say that they understand that it should not, they should not be abusing um, copyright law. Unfortunately, your company does not do anything to uphold the law. Even though you have that terms of agreement and you've washed your hands of it, when people complain to you, when the Motion Picture Association of America complains to you, you are by law required to maintain copyright law and to uphold these things and to take the files down. But you've made a point to not do that. So we believe that the solution really is to start there and build a team Build a small team of engineers or of legal maintenance who will listen to these requests and understand them and comply with them. And even though it seems that we are appeasing the RIAA and the NPAA, we're actually pleasing the individual producers who make these products. And we're trying to protect their rights. We're not trying to protect the rights of Brian or the NPAA. We're trying to protect the real individuals who are spreading the information. Because as soon as we start to stop that flow of information, they no longer have the incentive. If we're stealing it from them, quote unquote, um, then they will no longer be able to profit and they won't make anything, which will be bad for society. This free spread of information will stop entirely. But if we shift to open source, if we shift to an ethical use of BitTorrent protocol, and people understand when they upload it, when they upload their own work, that they won't be compensated. This allows, it will, sort of, it will limit the amount that each individual puts in into creating something and innovating and developing on something, but it will increase the number. Everybody all over the world will put in little bits and times here, a little five minute here and five minutes there to develop on a program. And that will make everything better. Oh, and, sorry, yes? No, no actually, I just when you were, I wanted to follow up on that point where talking about music and movies, I can see where the individual artists and longing them. And when um, I think it was Drew was talking about on the software, 
where you start getting into Microsoft and Adobe, where actually flowing through our sites pretty freely and illegally for free. That, um, as opposed to an individual artist, you have these you know, the bulk of Microsoft and their legal department coming after us. Is that something that we are currently battling? They would shut us down and have the power to do that in a heartbeat, how do you think? Is that a problem for us? And then moving to open source, uh, <coughs> those kinds of free applications, if that is our strategy, why would people come to us when it's already available elsewhere? Um, well, they would want to come to us because we, as she said, we are like a one-stop shop because we do have the easy access and the, the reliability to, to offer these resources. And what was the other question? Um, before that, I guess, what is our current situation with Microsoft and Adobe Group's legal department who shut us down? Oh, um, well, we were sued as a company um, on a basis of mainly, um, there was 22 different cases on strictly media sites, um, a smaller number, around 9 or 10, on film and television sites, and even a smaller on software development sites. Um, so I think where our liability problems mainly lay is with our media and our film. So. Um, we haven't really come into, we have come into problems with software, but the problem with that is it's already, as you said, um, easily accessible, so they don't really come after us, like they do in a sense, but mainly we are always being battled by our media portion, because our media portion on the site of your company right now is so grand and so large that that's where our main users are generated, that's where our main um, copyright infringement is coming into play, and it's that media and the movies and the streaming that is the problem. Let me ask one final uh, question because the uh, suggestion about uh, moving servers actually anticipated what I'm going to propose as an alternate. After your presentation, when the when the board gets together, I had already worked out a, 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 an alternative approach to this, which is that. Um, I don't believe that uh, you, your claim that there's no safe haven for pirates is true. I would propose, for example, that we locate, if nothing else, uh, in international waters with our servers there. And because I see this as a revolutionary movement, I, I see, you know, and the people, the group I represent, sees copyright law as an analog way of thinking, and that what, I, what we're suggesting is a digital way of approaching information. And so we believe that we're really advancing the welfare of society, we're advancing the welfare of the individual. We see this as a revolutionary and ethical movement. And so my proposal is that we uh, figure out where we would be safe from extradition treaties and the like. Uh, and that maybe we incorporate some of what you're doing, but the object of the game is just to have enough money to pay the fines and to keep going. So I, can, I, I wonder whether you have any ethical objections to that. We didn't call it Pirate Bay for nothing. <laughs> <laughs> it's not, yes. a small world day. <laughs> um, well, we have discussed this in our um, teams, sort of trying to figure out what would be the best for your company. Your company could do this. Your company could shut down, start up somewhere else. Um, and if they had some sort of small team that pulled some copyrighted material off, that could be enough to appease the big record giants and the No, I'm asking if, if you have any ethical problems with this as proposal. Right. I do. I would say yes. Um, as much as I agree, and I do agree, that what your company does, it does do something very good. For poor college students who can't afford to pay, you know, um, $600 for Microsoft Word, but they need the most upcoming thing because they need to be able to communicate with other students. They need to send a PowerPoint file to someone else, and if their version of Microsoft is too old, it's not even going to work. But the thing is, by doing that, I believe that you're also encouraging giants like Microsoft. You're encouraging them to keep what they want to do and whatever they do in sort of their own little Microsoft bubble. Because they know that their project's going to get around. They know that they'll make money off it. They'll make plenty of money off it, which may be why your company isn't concerned. But, or is, 
they're not so concerned with your company stealing because your company is only um, taking a small, a very, very small percent of their profits. The portion of your company that's dedicated to software and commercial software is about 2%. Very small, most of it's media files. But if you switch to open source software development, instead of promoting big giants like Microsoft, you'll be promoting individuals. You'll be promoting people to develop and create all over the world. You'll actually be giving the power of information into the hands of every single individual. What I think, I think that power of information and creating information will be a better um, influence on society than just allowing the user to just pull things. Instead, you're forcing the, with our proposal, you're forcing the user to create. Our ethical issue with um, yours um, is both that you're encouraging big giants like Microsoft on OneNote, but also that in a sort of sense, you're um, taking the things from people, a certain group of people who want to profit. You're taking it from them who want to profit, and then they won't make stuff anymore. But in our proposal, if you stop taking things from this group of people, there's a whole world of people who don't care about profit, who don't care about money. And if you start taking things from them, things that are freely given, then I think that will be even more beneficial to your company in the long run. It will be more beneficial to society. Okay, thank you. Uh, as you all know, we want to move things along. So I'd like at this point uh, to ask us to shift into feedback. So the uh, question is, any uh, specific points you have identifying in the presentation that you identify as strengths? Anything that you think uh, could be improved? Uh, Eric, shall we start with you? Um, I like the fact that you presented a scenario that is clear. Um, uh, you stuck with the, the ethical part fairly well and hammered away at it. There are some questions that I still have um, about, and you kept on mentioning using Microsoft even at the end. If, we, if the company for us is in the process of providing openness and then say that, I guess in my mind, is we are still promoting the idea of allowing Microsoft, Adobe, and the other companies to continue to flourish. My argument would probably be is we are actually providing a, a network in which individuals can rise up and create an open source platform idea. Think of it this way, a Google Doc that is literally not undermining, but it's a competitor to Microsoft. And as a result, in the case of Microsoft, Microsoft has will be lowering its costs in the future. Uh, they are actually trying to unveil Word Light and to compete with the Google applications. Um, so in reality, this open net, open software platform is actually turning the heads of this status quo of we can charge so much money, $600 that I think is going away because of all the products that are out there. And it's just another medium in which someone can pick up their money. Um, as for, you know, you mentioned the numbers, you know, how much we're paying, how much we have, and you said it was, was it $7 million we haven't paid yet? Uh, hmm? Yeah, it was $7 million. It was $7 million, but we've made $8 million. I would probably say, well, is there other ways to increase our revenue? <laughs> I mean, if we're doing that good, I mean, if we're just, the stuff is free and we are an aggregator, then all we need to do is make enough money to provide the stuff out there. So that's what I'll let my colleague. I think, I think the one thing that I heard going around, some a, a way that you can address this, which will keep it a little more laser focused, um, it wasn't completely clear to me who you guys were, why you were here, did we ask you to come, or are you activists who are coming here to scold us? Um, oh, yeah. Right? Um, and, and I think that in the opening setup, I think you could set it up in a way that a lot of the questions that came from all of us could be eliminated. If you were to open it, something along the lines of, you know, you've been a successful operation. 
doing the things that you're doing, focused on the cause of making open source available at any cost. Unfortunately, the past has shown that the cost is so great and your technology is so good, you can still do good in your own realm of ethics by bringing this technology available and using it in ways that don't conflict with ethics, don't conflict with laws, and we're here to show you how to do that. And if you were to open it with, thank you for inviting us to come before you and propose alternatives for your company going forward, I think you would take away a lot of this debate because if you open that way, I think almost all of your presentation drove that point home from there on. And you could close it by simply saying, and so, as we pose the question to you, can you be a cause for change still? Yes. Can you do it without legal liability? Yes. Can you do it within a stricter confine of ethical operations? Yes. And, and I think that because, to me, um, 28 minutes of your presentation was awesome. Everything in the middle made the case, but you left it up to us to figure out why we were listening to it. So take that out of the equation, and I think you've got a killer presentation. Thank you. I really do. Thank you. Yeah, I, as far as just the topic itself, I really like the topic being um, timely and being relevant to business school agendas right now where we're looking at where ethics and corporate social responsibility are being built into every program as something society needs and business schools put out there. You're doing that. And then where it meets technology and open source, now you're getting into strategy. Where more companies are starting to see that open source and all of the um, ethically good aspects of open source, I kept, I was troubled all the way until the end, and then you answered my question from your point of view about what you were recommending with respect to the very image of the company, that pirate ship peeled over on the open ocean, and the name Pirate Bay. And I'm kind of looking at this thing going, wow, we really are a, you know, we're, that's not only our strength, but that's our branding, is Pirate Bay. And I was thinking of Somalia and piracy and the images of that, and then very delicately handled that at the end without insulting us, the directors of the company. Um, so I thought as far as the subject and tying that in, whether you deal with that image more up front, you dealt with the, what, the motto, the mission statement, and uh, I was tripping over that too, as far as what our own, you know, so that's not your problem, but that is a problem that um, helping to sort that out in my mind would have helped me a little bit further about the world's most resilient bit torrent tracker. And when I think of resilient, I think of things that are bouncing back from crashing or burning. And when I think of trackers, I think of stuff that goes on in my laptop when I'm hooked up to the internet. And somebody's <laughs> tracking me and that sort of thing. Yeah. So, you know, a couple of negatives in there um, in that message, not in your presentation. Um, just a mechanical issue on making this thing better, it will become very much more polished as far as referring to notes and that sort of thing. Seems to be a big item with judges and this guy back here over time. Um, and you're really well on your start, some of you more than others as far as you know, the way you started. And mm -hmm. That's great, no notes, you're like directly in our face, you know, how do we start? Um, you were a little bit um, behind the microphone from just where I sit and everything. So depending on the circumstances where you are and all that, I couldn't see your face very well behind the microphone. We have to push the microphone down or stand at a different place or something simple like that. The other two of you I can see just fine. Um, you know, simple things like that help on body and perception. Um, and then on the charts, your charts were really good. It's white space yeah. and like 10 yeah. words yeah. per slide. It's refreshing to see that. Um, and then being a dean counter, a CPA by trade, I did look at the break-even chart and go, yeah, it's an accurate break-even chart. Um, there were no commas, it was really hard to figure out the number of users, I was counting the number, and then you didn't tell us. Um, but still, you know, just make that in millions or something. Throw a dollar sign at this dollars and leave the exactly. users without one yeah. so we can distinguish. Yeah. So that was a good chart, um, but was it the right chart? Now when I think of what, back to strategy and what we're trying to do, we're talking more about 
boost the competition. And there's some really exciting developments out there where these giant upheavals in the market between what Google is doing, what Apple is doing, where content is flowing, how the iTunes model is working with music, how are movies coming to us today? Netflix <coughs> has gone like this over the last 24 months. Um, a chart or two, not many, you've got it. Yeah. In fact, that was really great that you didn't overwhelm us with numbers and technical details. Mm -hmm. um, on the other hand, some of the competitive data, so if you still keep it simple, but have a picture of the competition, I felt like I would know mm -hmm. more strategically where to drive if I knew what the market was changing. Mm -hmm. so <coughs> Yeah, yeah, I'd say um, a couple things on the mechanical stuff as well, and, and I said the same thing. You know, you're comfortable a little bit here being at LMU, but when you go to the next step, uh, every speaker, the, the first thing I do is I have to be there at least 30 minutes early, I have to test the mics, I have yeah. to see where is the screen in relation to the podium, and so the beauty of having a team you guys can take turns watching the other person say, you know what, drag that podium a foot to the left. You know, you know you're blocking the screen view for some of the people. And you'll also know exactly where you need to be in relation to the mic. You'll have all, you know, each of you are going to, you know, you're different sized folks, so each of you are going to need a mic in a different place. If you've already practiced cranking it up, you just walk up there, you pull it right into place, and you're, you know you're good to go. So. More than anything, preparation in advance when you're in a new surrounding is going to make you feel a lot more comfortable. I think that's really important. One of the things that I've heard so often at these presentations over the years is a real unevenness. <clears throat> the three of you came up to the mic and there was a real evenness in the volume and the tone and that was really helpful. It wasn't like some people overpowered the room and some people didn't. That was really, that was really good. Um, the other thing I like, you guys look like pros sitting at the table, okay? And a lot of times people are squirming or they're nodding off, and, and I, I'm sure that being a college student at 8.30 in the morning on a Saturday, it's time for you to be up and, up and be dressed and, yeah. and everything. So that, I thought, I mean, when, when you guys came in, when you sat down, when you got up, I mean, I thought I was looking at professional consultants, and that's really important.